Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at ways to keep your home theater equipment cool. It's pretty common knowledge that heat is your worst enemy when it comes to components like AVRs and amplifiers. So theoretically, if you can get rid of the heat, you can potentially make your components last years longer. If you're interested in seeing how we accomplish this, stick around and we'll get into it right after the intro. Alright, as I mentioned, getting rid of the heat is a great way to extend the life of your components. A great way to do this is by adding some kind of fan cooling system. A company called AC Infinity has a whole line of component fan cooling systems that range in price from $49.99 to $119. They offer many different sizes to match the size of your component, and they also offer models that are thermally controlled so they'll turn on or off when needed. Along with the models I already mentioned, they also have single component AV fans. This is the route I decided to go since I had already installed some copper heat sinks on the chips in my processor, which we'll take a look at in a bit. So I figured the fans would be an added sense of security. The kit I purchased was the AC Infinity Multi-Fan System, model number S7-P, which came with two 120 millimeter ultra quiet fans and when they say ultra quiet, they're not kidding. With a total noise limit of just 19 dB at 130 CFM, you can barely hear these even when they're set to the highest speed. The kit also came with a multi-speed controller with low, medium, high, and off settings. A USB cord and power adapter was also included. The fans in the kit seem to be of very good quality and they have these really nice grills with the AC Infinity logo on the front. They also have really nice silicone rubber feet that not only help to reduce vibrations, but they work well to help keep the fans from moving around. And if for some reason you decide that two fans aren't enough, you can daisy chain up to six fans together on the same power adapter. Another thing I want to mention here is these fans not only work great for cooling AVRs and amps, but a lot of people use them for keeping things cool like PlayStations, Xboxes, Roku's, Apple TVs, or pretty much anything you can think of that needs cooling. I purchased my kit from Amazon for $25.99 and I'll leave a link in the description below just in case you're interested in buying one. I do recommend using the AC Infinity Power Adapter because the voltage rating matches the fans perfectly which will make the fans run at their max capacity. Installation of the fans, as you can imagine, was pretty straightforward. Just place them on the component you want to cool, plug the power adapter in. I use the outlet on the back of my processor so the fans will automatically turn on when I power up the system. Then it's just a matter of selecting the speed you want the fans to run and you're good to go. Now as I mentioned earlier, we used a basic AC Infinity fan kit which works great. But I'd recommend going to their website and looking over all of their kits so you can find the one that fits your needs the best. Alright, we've shown you one way to keep your components cool. Now we're going to show you how to take your component cooling to the next level. Before we do, I want to mention that this method is a little more involved and is really only necessary in the most extreme cases of overheating. This method involves gluing copper heat sinks to all the chips on the HDMI board in your receiver or processor. This is something you should only do if you're completely comfortable with working on your own equipment and I take no responsibility for damaged gear. With that said, this is a really easy thing to do. Just be careful and make sure you unplug whatever it is you're working on. Now as you can see I've already installed these on my processor. But all you have to do is put a small amount of non-conductive glue on the heat sink and place it on the chip you want to cool. Try not to put too much glue and if you do just wipe it off with a paper towel. Now just allow the glue to dry for about an hour and you're all done. I did this to my processor about six months ago and haven't had any issues with it at all. Unfortunately I didn't take any temperature readings before so I can't say how effective this method is. But I can say a lot of computer and electronic components use this manner of cooling so it must work pretty well. Again, this method is completely optional and probably not necessary in most cases, but I'm kind of OCD when it comes to my equipment. 
Knowing there's that added bit of cooling gives me peace of mind that my processor will last as long as possible. Alright guys, that's going to wrap up this video. If you enjoyed it and found the information in it valuable, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, let me know down below. And as always, have an awesome day.